Sankara is often referred to as Africa's Che Guevara. Sankara gave a speech marking and honoring the 20th anniversary of Che Guevara's October 9, 1967 execution, one week before his own assassination on October 15, 1987. In the haunting darkness of October 15, 1987, a terrible plan unfolded that would change history forever. Thomas Sankara, a brave and inspiring leader, became a victim of a wicked plot, a sneaky coup d'etat led by his former friend, Blaise Compari. Compari betrayed Sankara, accusing him of harming relations with France and Ivory Coast and making people doubt Sankara's true intentions. He falsely painted Sankara as a heartless killer, scheming to get rid of his political opponents with cold-hearted malice. But the dark tale didn't end there. A web of sinister alliances and power games emerged, involving Prince Johnson, a cruel Liberian warlord linked to Charles Taylor. Johnson revealed that Charles Taylor himself had plotted Sankara's assassination, a shocking revelation that sent shivers down everyone's spine, as the malevolent coup claimed Sankara's life, the impact echoed throughout the land. Even in death, some brave souls from the Committee for the Defense of the Revolution CDRs, stood up against the oppressive forces, putting up a courageous fight against the army for days, all in honor of their fallen leader, Halo Natrayeri, the sole survivor of Sankara's ruthless assassination. Shared the horrifying events of that fateful day, Sankara innocently attended a meeting with the Consile de Lentente, unaware of the deadly danger that awaited him. His ruthless assassins showed no mercy, not only killing him but also taking the lives of twelve others present at the meeting, like candles snuffed out in a stormy wind. Sankara's lifeless body bore the marks of brutality, a grim reminder of the cruelty inflicted upon him. He was denied the respect and honor he deserved, buried in an unmarked grave. In the aftermath, his grieving widow, Miriam, and their innocent children fled the nation, seeking refuge from the malevolence that engulfed the land, Compari, the vengeful puppet master, seized power and heartlessly dismantled Sankara's legacy. He undid Sankara's progressive policies, leaving a void where hope once thrived. He selfishly embraced alliances with international financial institutions, chasing desperate funds to fix the shattered economy while forgetting the true essence of Sankara's dreams. But why? 1. Sankara was good soldier. In 1966, after completing basic military training in secondary school, Sankara embarked on his military journey at just 19 years old. A year later, he was sent to Madagascar for officer training in Ant Syrup. It was during this time that he witnessed popular uprisings in 1971 and 1972 against the government of Philibert Sirinana. It was also during this period that he came across the writings of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, which had a profound impact on his political beliefs for the rest of his life, returning to his home country, Upper Volta, now Burkina Faso. In 1972, Sankara participated in a border war between Upper Volta and Mali by 1974. He gained recognition for his courage and skill in the conflict. However, as time went on, his political awareness grew, and he eventually condemned the fighting as useless and unjust. In addition to his military life, Sankara was a multi-talented individual. He had a flair for music and played the guitar in a band called Tout A Coup Jazz. In his everyday life, he was also known to ride a bicycle around the capital city of Ouagadougou, where he became a well-liked figure. In 1976, Sankara took on the role of commander at the Commando Training Center in Pa. That same year, he crossed paths with Blaise Compari during their time in Morocco. During the presidency of Colonel Say Zerbo, a group of young officers secretly formed an organization called the Communist Officers Group, Regroupement de Officiers Communists or ROC. This group included notable figures such as Henri Zongo, Jean-Baptiste Bukhari Lingani, Blaise Compari, 
and Thomas Sankara. Their shared ideology and commitment to communism laid the foundation for significant events that would shape the future of the nation. 2. He was politically great, in September 1981. Sankara was given the role of Minister of Information in Say Zerbo's military government. He stood out from other government officials in various ways, like choosing to bike to work instead of driving a car. Unlike his predecessors who censored journalists and newspapers, Sankara promoted investigative journalism and allowed the media to report freely on whatever they uncovered. This openness led to the exposure of government scandals by both privately owned and state-owned newspapers, however, Sankara's ideals clashed with the regime's direction, and he resigned from his position on April 12, 1982, opposing what he saw as the government's anti-labor policies. He boldly proclaimed, misfortune to those who gag the people, as he left, later, in January 1983, after another coup brought Major Dr. Jean-Baptiste Widrego to power. Sankara briefly served as Prime Minister. During his four months in office, he advocated for more progressive reforms. Unfortunately, he was dismissed from his position on May 17. Soon after, Sankara was arrested following a meeting between French President's African Affairs Advisor, Guy Penne, and Colonel Yeyian Somi. Along with Henri Zongo and Jean-Baptiste Bukhari Lingani, Sankara was detained. This decision to arrest Sankara was met with strong opposition from younger officers in the military regime, and the momentum created by his imprisonment eventually led to his friend Blaise Comperi staging another coup. 3. His work as president, in a coup d'état organized by Blaise Comperi, Thomas Sankara became the president on August 4, 1983, at the young age of 33. This coup received support from Libya, which was then on the verge of war with France in Chad. For more information on Chad's history, dot, Sankara considered himself a revolutionary and drew inspiration from leaders like Cuba's Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, and Ghana's military leader Jerry Rawlings. As president, he championed the cause of the Democratic and Popular Revolution RDP. This revolutionary ideology, defined by Sankara as anti-imperialist, was eloquently expressed in his speech on October 2, 1983, known as the Discours d'Orientation Politique DOP. The speech was written by his close associate, Valier Somi. Sankara's policies were centered around fighting corruption and promoting reforestation, reflecting his dedication to uplifting his nation, on August 4, 1984, to mark the first anniversary of his presidency, Sankara renamed the country Burkina Faso, which translates to the land of upright people, in the major languages of Muri and Dayula spoken in the country. Additionally, he designed a new flag and crafted a new national anthem called Daitani. Health care and public works, as soon as Sankara assumed office, his primary focus was on addressing the urgent needs of his people. He launched a massive vaccination campaign to combat diseases like polio, meningitis, and measles. Over 2 million Burkinabi received vaccinations between 1983 and 1985, making a significant impact on public health. Sankara's administration made remarkable progress in reducing infant mortality, which fell from 20.8% to 14.5% during his presidency. He was also the first African leader to openly acknowledge the severity of the AIDS epidemic in Africa, to improve living conditions, large-scale housing and infrastructure projects were initiated. Brick factories were established to eradicate urban slums, while efforts to combat deforestation included the creation of thousands of village nurseries and the planting of millions of trees, Sankara believed in empowering his country without relying on foreign aid. He led an extensive road and rail building program, and the Burkinabi people laid over 700 kilometers 430 miles, of rail. Fostering manganese extraction in the battle of the rails without foreign assistance, education was another vital aspect of his agenda. He launched programs to combat the country's 90% illiteracy rate, which showed promising results in the initial years. 
However, after his assassination, teacher's strikes hindered progress. To fill the void, the revolutionary teacher's program allowed anyone with a college degree to teach after a 10-day training course. During Sankara's leadership, the literacy rate dramatically increased from 13% in 1983 to an impressive 73% in 1987. His visionary policies demonstrated that African countries could achieve prosperity and progress independently, without relying on external assistance. Women's Rights Sankara was deeply committed to advancing women's rights and boldly proclaimed, there is no true social revolution without the liberation of women, empowering women in Burkinabi society was a prominent goal of Sankara's government. Unlike the norms of West Africa at that time, he appointed a significant number of women to high positions, making it an unprecedented policy priority. His administration took decisive steps to outlaw harmful practices like female genital mutilation, forced marriages, and polygamy. Moreover, he encouraged women to pursue careers outside the home and stay in school, even if pregnant. Sankara actively promoted contraception and urged husbands to experience the realities faced by women by going to the market and preparing meals. In his historic address on International Women's Day in 1987, he addressed thousands of women, highlighting the revolutionary changes the Burkinabi Revolution was bringing to the relationships between men and women. Sankara recognized the formidable but essential task of re-evaluating gender roles, Sankara broke barriers by appointing women to significant cabinet positions and actively recruiting them into the military, becoming the first African leader to do so. His vision and actions were instrumental in transforming the status of women in Burkina Faso, proving his unwavering commitment to gender equality and the liberation of women in society. Environment During the 1980s, when environmental awareness was still scarce, Thomas Sankara stood out as one of the few African leaders who recognized the urgency of protecting the environment. He waged three significant battles to safeguard nature, combating bush fires as punishable crimes, preventing cattle from roaming freely and damaging the environment, and regulating the haphazard cutting of firewood through organized and regulated practices, as part of a development program involving the active participation of the population. Burkina Faso successfully planted 10 million trees in just 15 months during the revolution. To combat desertification and recurring droughts. Sankara proposed creating wooded strips, approximately 50 kilometers long, stretching from the east to the west of the country. He also envisioned extending this green belt to other nations. Sankara's initiatives led to remarkable results. Cereal production which was at 1.1 billion tons before 1983, increased to 1.6 billion tons in 1987. The country achieved food self-sufficiency, as highlighted by Jean Ziegler, former UN Special Rapporteur for the Right to Food, recognizing the importance of wood as the primary energy source in Burkina Faso, Sankara emphasized the duty of every individual to maintain and regenerate nature reminding all citizens of their role in preserving the environment for the future. Assassination Trial In 2017, the Burkina Faso government formally requested the French government to release military documents related to the assassination of Thomas Sankara. This request followed accusations from Sankara's widow, who believed that France was behind the plot to assassinate her husband, in April 2021. After 34 years since Sankara's tragic death, former President Kampari and 13 others faced charges of complicity in his murder and other crimes committed during the coup. This development was part of President Rock Cabri's efforts towards national reconciliation. The trial against Kampari and the others commenced in October 2021 in Ouagadougou, with Kampari being tried in absentia. Hyacinth Kafando, the ex-presidential security chief, also faced trial in absentia. A week before the trial, Comperi's lawyers announced his non-attendance, citing perceived defects in the trial and emphasizing his claim to immunity as a former head of state. The hearing was postponed until March 1 upon defense attorneys' requests for more time to prepare their case. On April 6, 2022, 
Comperi and two others were found guilty and received life sentences in absentia. Eight others were sentenced to prison terms ranging from 3 to 20 years, while three were acquitted of all charges. Legacy, on the 15th of October 2007, exactly 20 years after his tragic assassination, Thomas Sankara was commemorated in ceremonies held across various nations. Including Burkina Faso, Mali, Senegal, Niger, Tanzania, Burundi, France, Canada, and the United States, in 2019, a statue of Sankara was erected at the site in Ouagadougou where he had been assassinated. However, due to complaints that the statue did not accurately capture his facial features, a new and improved statue was unveiled a year later to honor the memory of this esteemed leader.